Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode. Again, this is going to be the Try Hack Me Room Linux Strength Training Skills Room to build up them Linux skills. We're on task seven and eight. If y'all been rocking with me, y'all already know how this goes. I'm already locked in. I got everything in the lab, everything ready to go, and all the virtual machines, everything's fired up. So let's get it. All right, like I said, as you can see, task seven is going to be cracking encrypted GPG files. Task six, we dealt with that in the previous video, task five and six, where we encrypted and decrypted using the GPG tool. Now we're going to crack encrypted files that are GPG files. And then task eight is, I took it as just the intro to SQL as well as SQL databases. So to get started, we're just going to start with task seven. As always, I encourage you to go through the information that's put forth here. So th this is what that question will really be about. The question that we're going to start off on would be right here. And the question is find an encrypted file called personal.txt.gpg and find a word list called data.txt. We're going to SSH as Sarah again. That's the user that we've been using. So once we're logged in, we just want to use the find command. And that's the syntax for it. We should be pros with using this syntax by now, right? So it, it tells me that path, how to get to that file, right? So we found that one. And now that we go back to the question, it also says the word list called data.txt. Oh, I'm going to do fine and just replace all of this. So now we got the file path information. Again, John the Ripper is not installed on this uh, remote VM that we're logged into. So what we want to do is just get this information and copy it down somewhere. Okay, once we got the file path, let's go ahead and launch another terminal. And then we're going to use that secure copy command to get those files this is the personal.txt gpg file that we need that's encrypted that we're going to try to crack and then this data.txt that's the word list off of this remote machine uh, our target machine that we're going to try to use to crack okay also i just wanted to point out if we notice we got a dash in our file path name so our secure copy command right here is SCP the file name username at IP or remote machine colon then we have to do a slash and the directory but they don't tell us what to do if this has a uh, dash in the file name so again you got to think outside of the box since they're not going to tell us how to do that, we need that file over there. That's not going, you know, that ain't going to stop the show. We got to keep it going. So we do know how to move files. So what we can do is just move this file, the data.txt file. We can move that to this current directory that we're in, home slash Sarah, where we know that there's no dash in that file path name. So where we can use secure copy command and get that over. That was a roadblock I ran into when I was trying to do it. Because I thought it was, you know, just whoop de whoop. I'll get this file over there and then whoop de whoop get this file over there. But then I spent too much Googling around trying to figure out how to do it. It probably is a way to do it, right? But at this level, let's just use the other skills that we've learned in this, in this room. As far as moving the files, we have admin rights. We have rights to do that, to move the files in this file system. Okay, so first of all, you got to change your directory and get into the directory where that data.txt file is. Also going to shoot back over here real quick. Remember, after we found the word list called data.txt, it said to use tech to reverse that word list. So we're going to use the tech command here. 
first to reverse that word list. All right, so now that we're in that directory, right, we just want to simply move that file, the data.txt file, to the slash home slash Sarah directory. If we've done it correctly, we do ls. That data.txt file is now in that current working directory. A home slash there. All right, now we can just jump back onto our attack machine and use SCP. All right, now back on the attack machine, we could just use that secure copy command. And this is the syntax right here. Definitely just use the room and follow it here. It's in task, uh, what number? Task three to use that secure copy command, get comfortable with it. But this should get that data.txt file over here and put it in the root directory. We just need the password. And if we do a ls, we got it over there. So we just need that other file. All right, again, we got both of the files over using that secure copy command. And we can verify that with the ls command and they're both right there. The next step we want to do is to start cracking that encrypted file. After we verify that we got both of the files over to our attack system here, now we can use John the Ripper and use that brute force attack. To begin to crack the encrypted file, you have to create a hash file for the tool John the Ripper to reference. So basically, that personal.txt.gpg is an encrypted file and it has a hash. So all we're going to do is just give that hash over to John the Ripper and tell it that the format to use when you're trying to crack that hash is um, GPG. To do that, you're going to use the GPG2 John command. This command is what will create a hash, or extract a hash, I should say, outside of an encrypted GPG file. So the next part is the actual encrypted file. And then just output that, use that operator right there, that, and just output that to a file called hash1.txt. Okay, so since the command took now, all you have to do is make sure that this data.txt file, so if you use, you can use cat to open this file, right? Just to look at the content. You want to use tac like in the, uh, in the instructions, they told you to use tac. Because as you can already see here, the password in the encrypted file is going to begin with a V. That's all the way at the end of the file. So if you use tac data.txt, and then you could output that information into new data.txt. Now you have a file with all of those same words reversed in reverse order. Now you go ahead and use John, and then give it the format of GPG because that's what you're trying to brute force against. Give it the word list to use with this switch right here, equals data, data.txt. Remember, we're using that reverse order data.txt file. And then that hash 1.txt, which is the hash that we want it to crack. So as you can see, it's running and everything, and you can use S for status and almost any other key. I mean, you can use any other key for status and Q or Control C to abort. So we'll let that run for a few seconds and should find our passwords here. Probably take a minute or two. 
And right there, there goes the password right there. So now it's saying what is written in that now decrypted file. All right, so now that we have the password for the encrypted file, we just decrypt it using GPG. Personal.txt.gpg is the command to use. Do you want to overwrite? And then I just type Y for yes. And it overwrites to this file that I, it's telling me already exists because I've done this already. And then to open that file, you do cat command to open it. And then there goes your answer getting stronger in Linux and they're flexing on you. And that's how you open a now decrypted file. Basically, you decrypt it with the GPG tool that we learned about in the previous task. And then you open it with the cat command. All right, we're going to start task eight. And this is all about SQL, getting you familiar with SQL. Again, this is all the reading. We're going to go ahead and start off on the, there's only one question here. Find a file called employees.sql and read the SQL database. So for that, we already know we just got to use that find command again. So, and then I'm just going to find the file. And then there goes the path to that. Just so you know, when you're using this lab or if you're trying to log in, this is for, this is syntax for remote. What I'm going to give you is syntax for when the SQL database that we're going to log into is local to this machine. So you have to change your directory to the file path where this, or to the directory path where this file is located. To be able to log into it you can't do it from here so i'll show you what i mean when we get over there so just change my directory so right here to log into you're going to do i didn't use this part i'm sure you may have to use it. i didn't do this part so just if you wanted to know i never used that to get the flag and to get the answer to the login but i did use this so the command syntax for me to get in there was my SQL dash u. My SQL dash u for username was Sarah. And they told us in the question right here. Sarah and Samir can both log both into my SQL using the password password. So you put a dash P and it prompts you for password. And then you're in there. Once you're in there, you got to pull up the database to do that. The command is source. And then you give it the file name. This takes about a minute to a minute and a half. It's going a little bit faster because I've accessed the database and it's already pulled it up before. Yours may take it. If you got a fresh VM instance pulled up, yours may take a minute and a half or so to do. While we wait on this database to load up, we'll just look at a few things that we're going to have to do. Basically, it's just navigating. That's the way I understood this task was just how to navigate in the SQL database once you do get access. So if you were ever to get access to a SQL database, a few commands that you can run are show databases, which we're going to run. And then this shows you how to change to the database. Again, this is like Metasploit with that use command and then the database to use. And then again, some more command syntax. So definitely worth going through this a few times. I definitely used it for a reference and everything. Let's check on our server now or the database now. It took about 36 seconds to load. And now we just use the command show databases. Notice that the command syntax has a semicolon at the end when you run these commands. Don't forget to throw that semicolon in there. That took a minute getting used to. All right, so show databases. So our question is, find the flag contained in one of the tables. What is the flag? This is the flag. Here's a hint. Look for someone with the first name Alobal. So out of all these databases, we're supposed to guess which one we believe has 
something with our hint. Our hint says what database what I'm saying. Yeah, what database would have the first name Lobel? Out of all of these, employees would be the one. So we're going to use employees. Database has changed. Now you can use show table. And it shows the different tables. So the next thing, there's another there's a table here called employees. So you can use a command called describe employees. And that gives you more information. It gives you a field of first name. In our hint, we needed to look for somebody with the first name of Lobel. So after we do that, we found a table that has a field for first name. So the last part of this is just using a command that will filter that table for somebody that has a first name of Lobel. And the syntax for this after Googling around is select from employees, right? So select, and then that star just representing the wild card. So just filter through that whole field or that whole table. And then where the field with the first name, with the name first name, like global. Again, do your own research on why this command is the way this command is. Definitely shout out to the dude in the write-ups. I'll show y'all where I went. I definitely use the write-ups. Ain't no shame in my game. I went right here to this cat and went through his write-ups. So I encourage y'all to do the same. That's the only way you're going to learn. Right, and that's where you get this command from. And then you could do your research and figure out why that command works and everything. But once you hit enter, as you can see, it's going through, and we got a first name field, and there's a first name field of Lobel right here. And then that first name field does have indeed the flag that we're looking for, which is our flag right here in our answer. So the last task is going to be task nine, which is our final challenge. Again, hopefully y'all got some kind of value from going through both task 7 and task 8. As always, if you guys are filling the content, you already know what to do. It's definitely going to help. Y'all hit the notification bells when I'm dropping these videos. I'm going to keep them coming. I'm going to holler.